Welcome to Dangerous Prototypes. I'm Ian. Today we have a quick workshop update for you. First up, we've got some new cameras in the workshop and some new tripods. This is called a nasty clamp. It's a rubberized clamp with a flexible neck that holds the camera on the end. We're using these to make our workshop videos now because we can just clip them wherever we want. We've got one up here, we've got one over the soldering station here, and a third one that we can clamp wherever we need it. Uh, the clamps weren't cheap, they were about 44 bucks each, but we spent a weekend trying to figure out how to make our own, and once we hunted down all the parts and put them together, it cost about the same, and that's if our time was free. So we went ahead and bought them. They're really nice quality, heavy duty. They hold our little tiny video cameras just fine at any angle. We're really looking forward to using these, and we'll let you know more about it uh, as we make a couple videos with them and get used to them. Last week we released firmware version 6 for the Bus Pirate. That had a huge number of updates for all the hardware, but especially Bus Pirate version 4. And the firmware that shipped in version 4, the Alpha Developers firmware, it enumerated USB and worked okay, but most of the major modes didn't. We use a feature called Peripheral Pin Select in, uh, Bus Pirate, in all the Bus Pirates. And what that does is none of the hardware inside the PIC chip is fixed to a certain pin. You actually assign it to whatever pin you want to use. And that's how we make all the different protocols come out the same 10 or 12 pin header on the Bus Pirate, is by reassigning that hardware with peripheral pin select. Now, the original Alpha version 6 firmware had all the peripheral pin selects set up for version 3 and hard-coded in the source. So when we move to version 4, we're using different pins, and we needed to modify that so that all the different modes that used it worked correctly and came out to the correct pins. So now with firmware version 6, uh, the UART mode, uh, SPI mode, uh, MIDI, several different modes are now working correctly because we fixed that peripheral pin select bug. Uh, then we also, after version 6 release, we found a few other bugs, so we released version 6.1 this week that fixes a, a few minor things. We ordered a bunch of stuff from Seed recently and we got to check out the new box they're shipping dangerous prototype stuff in. This is just the Seed black box here with a static protective interior foam, a quality assurance seal, a barcode on the bottom. But they made up a bunch of our dangerous prototype stickers and stuck them on top too. So we appreciate that. We think it looks really good and it's part of our, our push to make things just a little bit more professional. Now let's take a look at some of the new PCBs we just got into the workshop. First up, we've got Bus Blaster version 3. Bus Blaster is our JTAG debugger. It uses an FT2232 chip, which is a USB to serial, USB to JTAG, USB to SPI, etc. It's a USB to serial converter chip. It does a bunch of different protocols. Uh, lots of manufacturers use it in their JTAG debuggers, so if we have that chip, we can work with lots of different software. And then what we did was add a CPLD, a reprogrammable logic chip, as the buffer. And that does level translation so that your device can be anywhere from 1.2 volts, I think, to 3.3 volts. And it translates it for the 3.3 volt uh, side of the FT2232. Uh, and, uh, the nice thing about using the CPLD is that it's reprogrammable. So you can do a simple USB firmware update and it can become any sort of manufacturer's programmer that uses the FT2232 chip. And that's like a JTAG key, um, PicoTab, there's, there's about a dozen of them. And they all have slightly different bu buffer arrangements. And what we've done is incorporated them all into one CPLD, one programmable logic chip. Now the difference between version 3 and version 2.5 is that we moved the USB connector from here to the end. And uh, that makes it more symmetrical. So the header's here and the USB jack is at the other end. Uh, that'll, be, that'll help us fit it into a standard case later. And more on that later. Uh, also, we made one small change to the circuit. Uh, on version 2.5, the FT2232 is connected to the CPLD, but there's a, a better pin arrangement we could have used. Uh, there's a clock pin that comes out of the FT2232 chip, and if we put that into the global clock pin of the CPLD, then we can do some fancy stuff, like maybe make a logic analyzer or do some other things. There's been a couple requests for that, so we wanted to make sure and roll it into the version 3 update. We've also got a Bus Blaster version 4, and this will be the next generation of our JTAG debugger, but it's going to take a lot of work before this is done. It's not anywhere near ready yet. Uh, the difference between this and the version 2.5 and the version 3 is that this uses the larger 100-pin CPLD. That means we can connect absolutely every pin from the FT2232 chip to the CPLD. 
that lets us do a couple of new things we couldn't do before using the new two-wire uh, SWD JTAG debugging protocol. Uh, the new protocol is just two wires, but it has some extra data lines. And in order to get that data output, it uses the, the secondary serial port on the FT2232 chip. Well, in version 2.5 and version 3, we're already using that to program the CPLD so that we can do the software updates. So in order to use that in the version 4, we had to add some circuitry to switch between the different connections, uh, depending on whether you're updating the CPLD or using it as a, a two-wire JTAG debugger. Well, that's all I have for now. Next week, we'll be back to solder some QFN chips and also some big 144-pin TQFP chips. Thank you for watching.